You know, I want to thank every person. I, I want to start this, this week out by thanking every person that sows into this ministry. You know, we're touching lives all over this country, all over this world at, with this podcast, and we're about to start I'm talking about just reaching into the jails and the prisons all over this nation for, with this podcast, with the videos that we're doing at the, at, at, at their weekly uh, uh, church service. It's just, it's unreal how that God is working, working through people that, that, are, that are getting, getting, I'm talking about set free through the truth in God's word and and the, and God's working through partners. We've got partners that are sowing into this ministry. I had one yesterday said, "We believe in you and what you're doing, reaching out to the to the broken, to the people that are that are just broken." And and it's the truth. There's millions all over this planet that don't know who they are, do have no idea who who God has made them to be. And if they would just come to understand the Bible and what the Bible says to them, for them, and about them, it would change their life. And and I, I'm called to do that. And I, I like I say, partners, I just want to thank you. I want to reach out and say thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, over everything that you sow into this ministry, a hundredfold return over everything that you give into this ministry to help us reach the masses because we are reaching a bunch of people, and I thank God for it. I thank God for it today that that we've got partners like you that sow into this ministry to help this be possible. So thank you. This is week 21 of the the study in 1 Corinthians. And this this is starting to get really rich, really rich. Last week I I let I I ended Friday almost in tears. Just had to keep from just fighting it because it was just so special to me when when we come to realize and understand who we are in in the church and our position that we hold and how important those positions are. So, so as we start out this week, week 21, I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you and lift you up and let you know that God loves you. He cares for you, and he wants more than anything for you to know he cares for you. He wants you to know it without a shadow of a doubt. He wants you to know that he's for you, and he'll be for you from now on. You just, People just don't realize that. They do not realize that how much God's for them and how much he's there for them. All they have to do is look to him. So so this week, I want to encourage you. If you've never done or never heard this podcast before, go back to June the 21st of 2021 and, and, and start this In Him Scripture study with us and go through all those In Him Scriptures. Go right into Romans. You'll come right into 1 Corinthians and catch up on what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in his word. Glory to God. Once again, I want to bring you my prayers for the world that we live in. I, I've done this for years now. I have, I have went over Paul's prayers for the Ephesians, and, and I, I do it for a reason. Don't skip through this part of this podcast because I, God wants to use these prayers to let you know just how much he loves you, just how much he wants to see you strong in him. That's the reason I do this, so the world can find out just how much he's for them today. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom, and insight, so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power 
for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he opens my eyes to that love more and more every day of my life, and he does it through his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Lord, touch my mind, touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. Lord, I want to give you all the honor and glory for all. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. We're going to be uh, in 1 Corinthians 12 and 26 today. And the King James Version says, And whether one, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoiced with it. Now let me read that in the New Living Translation. It says, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. The Amplified Classic says, and if one member suffers, all the parts share the suffering. If if one member is honored, all the members share in the enjoyment of it. Now, He's talking about the church. He wants us to understand that that we're part of a of a of a grand organism, if you if if you'll allow me to call it that. I'm talking about one body. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain something to you, to you. If I mash my thumb, I mash my thumb here a while back. And it's still the the nail, the blood is not grew out of it. it I've got a black spot on the, on the very tip of my my fingernail because I mashed it pretty good, not really bad, but my whole body knew it when it when it when it happened. You know, I I that I give that that thumb the the utmost my utmost attention when all this went went to went took place. Well. That's what Paul was wanting us to understand, that when, when we, as a body, as the church, if one, uh, if one person is having problems and, and suffering with something, we are suffering with them. And he wants, he wants us to know that, that you've got somebody that you can count on to, to, to lean on. Like I say, my thumb needed some help, <laughs> and and I, I I I assure you, my other hand helped my thumb when when I mashed it because it didn't feel good at all. And, but you see, this Paul wanted the Corinthians to understand that when when one person is dealing with something in this church, we're all dealing with it. We're all for them. See, there, there so many times in religion. Religion wants to divide. Religion wants to say, well, you're not part of my group. You're not part of, of anything that, that's going on 
or, or around me or, or in this. No, you're not part of this but because you don't believe the way we do. They, it wants to separate. But what Paul was wanting the Corinthians and of the church, that church to understand is, he said, well, hey, when you, you start dealing with something, you're, we're all dealing with it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this. He said he said when when one is honored, what 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 did he say? All the members rejoice with it. In other words, we're all getting honored. We're the body of Christ. We're we are God's born again children, a living organism that that walks and talks and breathes the truth of God's word. And when 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 one gets honored. Guess what? We all get honored. We all stand and rejoice in what is going on around us for the glory of God. You know, I I I, I get a I mean just get, get get a thrill out of being able to to minister the truth in God's word and people get it. People get it. And they and they they come up and they they you know they say, Boy, that was that was great. And and I, I I I I'm the first one to say, look, this is God. Glory to Him. And my pastor told me last night. He said that was a great message. I said, glory to God. It's Him. He said, I knew you'd say that, but he said, I want you to know that what what you're doing is good. And and it's just it's just the way I'm built. I don't want the credit for this. I don't want the credit for what is going on in this ministry. I want God to get all the credit for it. I'm just a mouthpiece. And and if I can be used, if I can be used anywhere, I want to be used in his kingdom. I want to be used so that he can get all the honor and the glory for it. So if you're dealing with something today and you're hurting, now listen, you know, we we're gonna you're gonna deal with things in your life. I told him yet last night at our uh, meeting, I said, "You know the uh, I, I've been dealing with something just about the the podcast and the app and and getting everything going in the right direction. You know, the devil fights it, and 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 it's it's not necessarily uh uh he's he's just he's getting anywhere. He don't get anywhere when he does fight it. All he does is." Has hindered the progress a little bit because it just keeps going on. But you know, when you start realizing and understanding that you're making an impact, an impact on a lot of people, and people are are taking this word and and they're getting hold of what God is doing, and and you're they're you're. They're getting getting hold and building confidence, not in you, not in their religion, but in him. You you're gonna see you're gonna see some things pop up that you know without a shadow of a doubt that it's it's the, the devil's the author of it all. But guess what? You don't have to deal with it on your own. I I don't have to. I don't have to. Yesterday before we went to the to the meeting. You know, my wife hugged my neck. She said, honey, everything's going to be fine with what, what we're dealing with right now. He, she said, I know it. I, and I told her, I said, I agree with that. I know that. You know, my son told me last yesterday, he said, take a breath. Take a breath. Because it was just you know, just aggravation. And I, 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 I don't like things that, that wants to mess you up and just uh, stops the flow of things. And and he he just told me he said just slow down take a breath everything's fine I'm one of them wants to grab that that ornery goat by the by the horns and mash his nose real good and make him do what he's supposed to do and you can't always do that I know that that's not the love of God a lot of times but what I want you to realize and understand that that when you have problems we all have problems we all deal with things and we we lift you up. When you're dealing with things, we pray for you. I pray for this ministry. I pray for the world we live in, every individual that walks the face of this planet, every day of my life. I lift them up and ask God to open their eyes to the truth of God's Word because all the answers to all the problems in the world we live in today is in His Word. 
That's, that, is my, that is my goal. That is my calling. That is my commission. And I have been anointed to do that. I have been anointed to teach God's Word to the effect of people seeing and understanding just how much He loves them, just how much He's for them, and just how much they are in, in His kingdom, that He has made them a whole lot more than religion will ever let them understand. We got to realize that we got to walk away from all the, the religious junk, all the shame and the condemnation that people want to pour on you. I've got people in my life that have done their dead level best to hinder me and, and, and condemn me and shame me since I was a child, since I was a child. And they've never let up. It, it seems like it seems like it's that they've made it their mission to do to do that. But the fact of the matter is, today I'm 54 years old at the time of this recording, and today there ain't nothing like that going to ever get uh, going to ever hinder me again, because I know who I have been made to be in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I'm telling you what, that has built a confidence in me that that ain't nobody going to jar it out of me. They, you can forget it. You, know, you say, ah, you you need to change your mind. Nope, I I can't do it. I ain't going to do it. I, that, my name's been it and I ain't in it. I know who I am in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and there ain't nobody in this world going to change my mind of it. He has made me to be the righteousness of God in him. Why? Because he was made to be sin for me, for me. So that who knew no sin, he didn't know any sin. He died an innocent death for Stacy Hayes and for everybody else on this planet. And it is my calling and commission, and that to teach this and show people just how much God cares, just how much He's for them. I, I, want, I want you to understand something today. When when you're dealing with something, this whole church is dealing with it. You're, the children of God in this world are dealing with the same thing. We, we lift you up in prayer on a daily basis of this ministry. And, we, and when we're honored, listen, when, when the body of Christ, when the church is honored, let me read this one more time. It says, if whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. In other words, when one is, is on, the, on the mountain, we're all with them. You understand what I'm talking about? Paul wanted the Corinthians to know that. I want you to know it. Whether you're suffering with something or whether you're rejoicing in something, listen, there's people all around you taking part in what is going on in your life, and God wants you to know that he's for you. So I, I, I urge you today, if you've never... If you've never been born again, if you've if you're if you're listening to this podcast and you say, "Boy, I would love to be part of something like that. I would love to be part of of just allowing allowing people around me to lift me up at times." I'm gonna tell you, there's there's peace, there's comfort in the church, in the church. Now, I'm not talking about some religious group. I'm talking about God's church. God's born again church, and 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 He wants you to be part out of it if you've never been born again. I'm telling you, God loves you and He cares for you. He wants to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. But you know how you do, how He does that because when you invite Jesus in, He makes or you make Him Lord. You make a, a conscious decision to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Romans ten and nine says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says, thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He will. I promise you he will. I promise you, he'll save you today if you'll confess him as Lord of your life by faith. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead 
and you shall be saved. May Jesus Christ, Lord of your life today, and watch him change your life forever. Now listen, if you're, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website and, and look at all the resources that, that's on that website for you to, to, to have for nothing. Don't cost you anything. They're free. There's, a, there's a phone apps. There's all kinds of different uh, graphics and pictures and scriptures, videos. I'm talking about all kinds of stuff that you can have for free. They're free. There's there, these bookmarks. I hadn't said nothing about those in a while, but I want you to encourage you. Contact me. I want to send you one of these bookmarks so that you can can go through these scripture studies with us and and find out who you are in Christ. Like I say, if you've if you've never been born again, make Jesus Lord of your life and then find out who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Oh, I thank God for those truths. Now, if you're a partner, partners thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry. I thank God for faithful partners that sow in this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. And then that is to give his word away all over this planet, free of charge. Oh, I thank God for faithful partners today. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. 